So in a few days, I have an interview with SpaceX and I want to share with you how I'm going to be preparing for this interview. I'm going to talk about two things that are important. One is mindset going to the interview and two is actual preparation I'm going to be doing. And as far as mindset, I'm going in this interview just to have a conversation. I'm not going in with the belief of, oh my God, I got to get the job no matter what. Or like, no, I really want the job. That's not going to be my approach. My approach is I'm going to go in, I'm going to have a conversation with the manager and I'm going to first listen to what the position is about in detail, what kind of things I'll be expected to be doing. And we will try to see whether I would would be a good fit for the team and whether my skill set and goals are aligned with the, the team's skill set and goals. Now you might think, whoa, dude, it's like SpaceX. Like, what are you talking about? And people would kill to get a job there. People, this is, it's mo many people's dream job. And I'm very well aware of that. And I respect SpaceX a lot. And I love the work that they do. And it would probably be awesome to work there. Now, if I was like a freshman or sophomore in undergrad and I had absolutely no experience and I just wanted to gain experience and let, like, let's say I was really interested in space, I would go work at SpaceX. Like as do, I would probably go do anything there. I'd probably be like, like a mechanical engineering intern if needed. I'll just go do anything just to be in the environment, expose myself to what's going on, talk to the people and learn hands-on. Just probably being at SpaceX for three months for an internship, for example, that probably alone is like an insane experience in terms of skills you develop, beliefs, like increasing the upper bound of the integral of your beliefs. And wh what I mean by that is like, you believe you're capable of achieving something. You go through an experience that makes you realize, oh no, I can actually do way more. And I can imagine like SpaceX internship or job would probably be a good way to do that. It'll show you what you're actually capable of doing. However, I am not a freshman or sophomore in my undergrad. I'm nearing the end of my PhD. I've been uh, studying electrical engineering for around nine years. I did four years of undergrad and then five years of PhD, including two years of master's. So technically four years undergrad, two years master's, three years PhD. And what that has allowed me to do is accumulate a large amount of skill and experience such that I'm not like desperate to get a job or get an internship. And I'm like at a slightly later stage in my career than like say students that are in their undergrad phases, which allows me to say, hold on a second, don't just jump into any opportunity, like be calm and assess the situation, see what's actually the best fit for you. And if you miss out on something, that's okay. It's not the end of the world because my skill set are in demand and there are probably multiple companies that would make good use of my skill set. Now here's the paradox. The irony is that by going in with that mindset and approach, I am increasing the odds of getting that job slash internship. Because think about it, if you're a hiring manager and you're talking to an engineering student or an engineer and you're trying to get them to be on your team, what's going to be more attractive? Somebody who's genuinely curious about what the project is about and whether they can find themselves to be a good fit or someone who's just like, hey, just hire me, hire me, hire me. Sure, that person may give the impression that they're like willing to work a lot harder. But if the area is very technical and requires like specific knowledge, I would probably go with a person who is a bit more reserved and curious about whether they will be useful or not to the team. However, my guess, because it's SpaceX, and it seems like a very efficient place to work, manager would probably be a lot more interested in hearing about what I'm good at what I enjoy doing. And then they would probably talk about what the project entails and what help they would need. And even if it's a skill that I do not possess, I will highlight that if it's something I'm interested in or curious about, I could probably learn it very quickly because the whole idea of getting a job in an innovative company is not that you just go and do what you know. Like, no, you're going to run into problems that probably have not been solved before or not many people have solved before. So you're going to be forced to learn on the job. But the trick is that you learn on the job something that you're interested in or you're at least curious about. So I'm going into the interview with more curiosity than desperation. Now, keep in mind, again, I'm going to emphasize that I've been in the field for quite a while. I've done a lot of work. I've done like, I don't know, six or seven previous internships. I've done undergraduate research. I've published papers. I've done many things that I've stacked in my belt that allow me to have this skill leverage or career leverage where I can actually not kind of launch into any opportunity, but be more reserved and be able to take a step back and think about what's actually most suitable for me. And ideally, this is what you would be doing also as an undergrad. However, I understand that if you haven't even gotten your first internship, uh, you can't really be too picky. You would probably jump at the first opportunity that you have, learn from that, use that as the first step in the ladder, and then go into another opportunity, learn from that, use that as another step in the ladder. And ideally, you also have the self-awareness to understand where you are in the world, where your skill set falls in the world how much demand there is for your skill and how good you are at the thing that you do and how fast you are at learning things if you're placed in an environment. And this is why on this channel, I talk a lot about self-awareness and mindset, because if you don't have the self-awareness of your own skills and your, and, and your beliefs are all over the place, like how are you going to figure that out? You won't, and you probably won't make the accurate decisions. Now, as far as like technical preparation, I think for me that that part is also not so hard. Obviously, I'm going to do my research on the specific project. In this case, I think it's like SpaceX Starship, which is very cool and exciting. It's like first ever humongous, fully re reusable rocket. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically read up a bit more on it and try to study the electronic systems, the RF systems, and then come try to prepare some questions. And, and again, these questions are driven by curiosity rather than trying to look impressive. Like I'm not doing my preparation and research so the manager thinks that I did my research. I mean, even though that will be implied, obviously, but I'm actually genuinely curious on how this thing operates. And I, I'm willing to bet a big part of the interview will be me asking questions to get a better understanding of how like Starship communication system operates on a system level, assuming they can release that information. So yeah, I just thought it would be probably useful to tell you how I 
prepare for my interviews. My interviews are mostly conversations that are driven by curiosity rather than like fear or desperation. And it'll, it'll be just me trying to see how useful I would be to the team. And if I'm very useful, then I will say, hey, yes, I'm very interested in this. And if I don't think I'm very useful, I'll say uh, like, do you have something else I could work on? And if not, if it's not a good fit, then it's not a good fit and that's okay. There are other options. However, again, if you are in a situation where there are no options or you don't have experience or skill leverage, then I would say jump at the first thing that you have in sight and do very well in that and try to impress and learn and put skills in your skill toolbox and build up your skill leverage to a point where you can calibrate yourself so you can be a bit more choosy about what you do. Again, this is what I would do. There's just one person on the internet. Well, I'm a PhD student, electrical engineering. So this is just what I would do. And this is how I approach things. And my hope is that you use your own critical thinking and reasoning to learn or extract something from that and not just apply it blindly. Now, more important than this concept of skill leverage is actually the thing that I talk about a lot, which is self-awareness and the layers inside your brain when you're making decisions as an electrical engineer, especially in terms of what skill to learn and what job to go for. And I actually made a video about that that I think you would absolutely gain value from and should be over here.